scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. But the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money, financial reward, breakthrough, restoration, as good as those things are, they rape, sorry to use that word, but that is the best expression. They rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position. Nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again. Are we together now? Because the believer just wants to receive. To sit down and learn, I'm not interested. Or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit. It looks powerful until you watch them misuse it. They will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things, but lack of character will destroy it. Are we together now? And sooner or later, those people will tell you two months, they will tell you they are called into ministry. Six months later, they are already in trouble. It's important that believers be guided. I am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of Christ. Paul taught us that one who is a bishop, a pastor, and that applies to anyone, a deacon, an ordained worker, there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of God. I'm just giving us a background. This is the challenge with celebrities and the house of God. Celebrities, those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians, celebrity businessmen, when they come into the church, they expect the same spotlight, correct? The same honor. So you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician, for instance. Are we together now? And then he now gives his life to Christ. And in a bid to honor him, you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded. He sits down where the ministers are sitting. You give him offering. Help and raise offering. He stands on stage and you see him speaking Babylon. You know that this guy, he has not, he, he has not stabilized. He's just barely entering the kingdom. But you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity. Let me tell you, whoever you are, when you come in the kingdom, you must start and join that line. You see that? Yes. Honor be given to you for, your, for exposing your value to be rewarded. But there must be that system of building. I think this is a word from God to many people already. All these hilarious ordinations, hilarious laying on of hands, hilarious appointment of people. Someone gets born again in two weeks. He's ordained, sent somewhere. We must be careful. It will lead to a lot of inefficiency. Children leading children. Babes, the Bible called them, unfruitful in the handling of the word of God. And so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchmani would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished
completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid like the buildings in dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave i just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because i want us to experience breakthrough i want us to love god and know god but there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that and we thank god for the kind of grace in this house someone can be born again and in two weeks is already on fire and people see you and say pastor and then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say wow that means this is speed no men cannot see the heart except it is given to them hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people matter matter you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you this one reverend this one started his church yesterday this one this and you you are not even even an esco in a department and you say is it that lord you are not seeing me huh do, do, are, are you trying to say i'm not making progress whoever told you appointment is proof of progress If the lifespan of your commitment in the house of God is to be seen and to be appointed into offices then it's a disaster so you see people fight like politics oh there is a vacancy that vacancy is a deacon and you see everybody coming to greet the pastor pastor good afternoon I just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back I've got you covered that's a manifesto that's 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 political party When Jesus was going to select people that he would train, the Bible says he spent the whole night. Jesus, the fountain of wisdom, knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibility is a serious thing. You judge by the eye and see Eliab and say, surely this is God's anointed and God said, uh-uh, that's not how I choose. Oh. Look at the kind of people Jesus fasted all through the night to choose. You fast through the night and choose weaklings, thieves, fearful people. Why fast? Do you have to fast to see them? He fasted and saw what they would become, as weak as they were. They were already scribes and Pharisees. 
jump in and say look just restructure our mindset and that's all we have reduced the journey and God looked at a tax collector wicked man very stupid people and said this is exactly what I'm looking for Saul is on his way to Damascus and God is looking at him what an apostle killing people you see the way God sees bar, let me teach you something if you don't learn this you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church there are people seated here inside and outside let me tell you the dimensions they are walking in the spirit probably even me have not entered those dimensions yet they come quietly you see them sit down they are watching they are learning reminds me of how many how students are the real person who is taking first position is somewhere he will write every note with the example and the person who is second to the last yeah i know that example it came from uh, that that uh, book I, I know this man i know the book he's reading yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam but the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen never promote people emotionally give them a chance to have a track record with god give them a chance to have a track record with god don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels and do not flatter yourself into thinking i think i am fit for a level let god himself accredit you it says paul a man approved approved there are illegal people the same way there are jam centers there are authorized jam centers correct there are authorized hospitals there are authorized drugs and every authorized drug has a registration number we call it NAFTAC registration number correct whether the drugs are big or small now there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs put the drugs and put camels on them do all kinds of things it does not make it legal the fact that it was successfully smuggled those drugs in themselves may not kill but they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called navdak that's how it is spiritually you can get up and move and yet you have not been approved let me tell you when people are approved on earth they are assigned thrones in heaven a throne is a symbol of authority those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces that's why somebody can come no rema no revelation but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words they can speak they can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it brothers and sisters i want you to preach to yourself i receive grace to stay until he accredits me i receive grace to stay can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i believe that is the spirit of god that just led me to communicate that i receive grace to stay pray oh the head of department prayer is not seeing me are the leaders not seeing me is this pastor femi not seeing me worship team are they not seeing me to give me songs no never lift yourself stay for when the season of appearing comes let me tell you no mortal man can stop you pray i receive grace shabrakato sadabala karyatash lembreketo kasubri atakatash brato sobrende gasho brakatoskia pray pray Pray, pray, pray. Lord, let me be built to its finest. Let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Not half baked. Thoroughly furnished. Unto all good works. I receive the grace to stay. I receive the grace to learn. I receive the grace to be built. It may take time, but I stay. Stabata katabrade gedebalada sodom brisk kalabariyata. 
I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will get to our, our teaching proper, but I'm just stressing this. Oh, God is calling you to be a kingdom financier. And all of a sudden, you are killing yourself, trying to wear every clothes, trying to buy every watch. Don't die for nothing. God is calling you to be a prophet. And all of a sudden, you are forcing yourself to see. You are not seeing anything. This thing is not trial and error. Keep walking with God. One day it will be like a joke. You will wake up one morning into a portal. A vista just opens up and says, so this is what happens. Until then, you force yourself, you will see something. And what you see will destroy your life, destroy others. You will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained. I watch people, and let me tell you this, is with all humility. I watch people and I see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit. I see the disaster that they cause with those swords. It takes a skill to hold that sword. The Bible says with wise counsel make war. It, that you have a sword does not just mean you. No, no, no. Solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child. You, you have to hold it well. Otherwise you will kill people. When you are trained by God as a leader, you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet. They may expect you to speak, but you have been so trained. Full of knowledge, yet silent. Look at Moses, a man who was heavily anointed, yet he never prophesied, he kept quiet. When the spirit on him came on 70 people, none of them could stand. Yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control. A lot of childishness that goes on in the body of Christ I'm preaching to someone some of those things look like the pathways for recognition you will never this honor let me tell you is a mantle it comes from heaven with a track record you can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocres around your life but if there is no this this ranking you see increase it is God God left it to himself plant water you can increase yourself are we together men can look at your life and know you are growing preaching there are nine things I won't teach you today there are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world nine preaching or teaching what we call pulpit ministry is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you must you must there are times God exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yet there are all kinds of people moving around and will tell you I am this and that I am apostle this I am prophet this I am that and that and your name is Emeka I say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things I, I am a kingdom millionaire I, I don't take water in a, in a sachet again I have to use bottle because I'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of I believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life you now want to destroy or run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in Nigeria eight out of every ten 
close before the year is finished yet you see the convictions god told me i saw it so 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 our vision i saw this and that and in that vision we are going to the nations if you do not understand what i'm teaching you tonight your life will be a track record of blunders sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the lord i want to save you years of pain are you ready to pray now open my eyes lift your voice and pray open my eyes open my eyes but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head pray but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head but thou oh Lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head hallelujah listen to me there were two brothers in the bible born of the same father we understand called Cain and Abel two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing listen every time there is no response from heaven find out why because he said if you did it rightly I have no bias for you if you did it rightly there are dimensions I have not entered as a person I don't get responses from heaven it's a sign that there is a level of alignment I need to step into because Benny Hinn will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven there are there are things I now do and I get responses from heaven that I did not get a response yesterday use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign you've been doing everything around your life there is no corresponding response why continue to flatter yourself i'm not doubting that you are a prophet but i'm saying sit down you carry what you call prophecy you will never go to the nations that way he cannot commit the heart of kings to you oh i'm a pastor call me pastor don't call me brother i'm not a brother i'm a pastor settle down the bible said they shall call you ministers of our god it's not a name you invent for yourself it's an inevitable product of a track record there are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries they are not allowing men see me if you ever think that way it's a stupid thought from antichrist it's from the devil the bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel are we together i just feel we should pray one more prayer again say lord i will wait until that grace comes i will wait until I step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I will pray. I will wait. I am proud of where I am. My contemporaries may go ahead of me, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. There is a making. There is a making. Lakata praka sodo bakariana balaka. Been tried as gold. Been tried as gold. The gold of offering. The finest of them. Lekata praska da balada kasha da preska da balaka sula. I receive grace. 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 Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? 
hey, a little bit, a little bit. Soon your day will come, stop working you, changing everything. Will you swallow your pride tonight? Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little yeah, a little yeah. Soon your day will dawn inside working. Stop crying around and looking for invitation. Invite me. I can sing. Pastor, invite me to your church. I promise you won't be disappointed. No. No. Stay in the secret place. Let everyone go. Remain there. He will sharpen you. Mm. Sharpen you. Then when you come out, you will be like the gold of offer. The finest of it. Finest of it. No guessing. Listen. You see, I had a vision day before yesterday when Ife, the great land of Ife, and I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw certain things about my future. And I saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what I was walking now like child's play. After that vision, I just laid down. I said, Lord, thank you. This is the exact motivation I need. Because you see, when men clap for you, you need to see something far that will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of result the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says sharing is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the act head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledge you and just call you daddy or call you mommy or call you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and say leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season 
then a thousand cubits is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that god can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little here a little there soon your day will dawn start working you changing everything yeah. hallelujah I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards many of you never know I've not announced one to you several awards you will never see one on my table I don't trust those things I thank God for them but I don't believe them you see if you if 10 of you write a test ah huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass so you have to you don't just say i'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to god's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen we are talking of ancient portals opened up hosting god like gods on the earth we are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously not all this jamboree and talking and jacking we are talking of putting nations under the feet of jesus stopping the sun to rise over nations until jesus becomes lord joshua did it when you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done, but Lord, there is more. Thank you for the miracles, but there are higher levels of fire. There are higher levels of power. There are higher dimensions, rankings in the spirit. Pray, pray. You are a prophet, but there are deeper levels. Come on now. There are levels of the prophetic where you create realities. You are an apostle, no doubt, but there are levels of the apostolic where you are giving the keys of David that can shut doors and no one will open.
tell you the kind of training and the kind of weapon do you know North Korea has weapons we've not seen the potentials yet they have been building it nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials no we've seen the bombs we've seen the ballistic missiles America has weapons that nobody in the world has seen he said thou at my battle axe my weapons of war with you I will beat down nation it didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good Greek and Hebrew words it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of God prophetically you have all of God but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but I'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are I know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it, oh, hold on I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we're making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down it's a call one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this I look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of God and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever I get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if I continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a herbalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit 
and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price I'm, I'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret God punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you tonight. please let's not play games with this thing if you are in it go for it go for it fast for it pray for it study for it sit down for it sit down for it don't rush anything I assure you one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years there's nothing called wasted time with him please sit down you need to advise yourself tonight myself sit down myself sit down myself sit down myself sit ah you are papa thank god myself sit down you are mama you are deaconess you are prophetess you are apostle you are this myself sit down then you will command levels of power and you will stand and watch what God is doing to you and you will say my God what is this please be seated in Jesus name if I had my way we would just pray till the service is finished because when the water is the Bible says you strike while the iron is hot as it's hot like this you strike it let everything that is not God fly out of that 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 making let's touch on something tonight But this message is really a message that struck hard i believe there are specific people this word is for god is asking you to wake up and eli is asking you to go back to sleep you have to choose who to believe oh at your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of things an apostle of uncommon grace and power I thank God for it but I just look at the text and I laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself nobody grows that way 
you sit down and you are sharpened and filed you know how a razor blade is when you buy a new razor blade you touch it on a paper that's how it goes that's what God is saying you see God lifting all these our people now worship team gradually gradually when, when they all come to me I tell them go and sit down because I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit you can feel sharp because you cut wood but what you are going to be cutting are metals not woods metals metals there are machines that ride through metals there are machines that cut stones do you know the the, the strength of those materials you cut through those brah, just cut everything there are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods they will hook and the machine will stop turning that's nonsense and inferior product it's a sign that that was not a good product but when you buy it you buy something it will cut through rocks and pieces them that's what God is telling me to. by the time you stand in all the millions you are looking for you will be so valuable oh I, at my age I think I should have built a house don't worry just stay somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal i teach you success principles we just finished success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it I, I don't know but God must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble though. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part one in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes god doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery I've said it. Many people would think it's witchcraft. If you see me in your dream, wake up and rejoice. Something serious happened to you. Hallelujah. You must have the arsenals. When you are discouraged, what do you have in your spiritual arsenal? Is there a message? Is there a tool? I tell you, woe to that person who has not programmed. You don't prepare for battle at the war front. You station them. There are tools. Whenever I feel that I'm losing spiritual favor, there are tools already. Ah, there are tools. There are tools. There are tools. God gave me tools. Tools. Whenever you feel you are lazy, that fasting grace is not there. I tell you one correct message. Listen to it in the night. Where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had 
you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always God's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you are already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down share messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah I feel like praying no this thing is on me I feel like I wish I were alone. I feel like praying. Let me tell you how what to do. Whenever your spirit is stirred, don't go to bed. Pray immediately. Make sure you can sleep praying, but don't waste it. There are times this kind of things happen to you alone. You are listening to a message every time. Every time because the moment you feel it, it's like a spiritual feeling station. Something is happening. Prayer is like opening the tank. You see that? You open the tank. Oh God, fill me. Let that anointing come. Let that fire come. And then it comes upon your spirit. These are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong. Some of you, after hearing this now, you now relax back to carnality. You see that? Carnality doesn't mean something evil. You just come down to the... This is what it means to be in the spirit. Your spirit is alive. Ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in number one our image everybody say image number two after our likeness and then he says let them always oh, projected have dominion please stop the Bible says let us make man in two using two dimensions the first is our image now until adam we know that already that there were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not God's own kind of body they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different di dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of god but never in his image the image of god was what lucifer wanted lucifer was already in the likeness of god the likeness of god means god has two hands the bible doesn't tell us he has um the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies are we together now god has two legs he stands on one head there are creatures all kinds of things but i'm saying god as a person when jesus came the bible called him the full expression of the image of the christ so we see him carrying that form all other humanoid species were in the likeness of man of god but man was in the image the image of god is a spiritual quality right the the imprint of his person the very factor that makes God God is where you get the root word kabod, glory. The essence of God was vested in his image. Image. 
so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of god but the image of god and then god told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is god's original idea a great mentor dr miles Munro, will tell you that's god's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see god making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man i don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do with dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls god's original idea was not to have healing services all of those things were predicated upon something that happened we call it the fall of man man's use of his will to defy god's will in rebellion led to other provisions so everything from genesis chapter 4 the law and and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down they were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still god's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however god's original idea for you was not heaven 
God's original idea for you was earth. It is still earth. It will always be earth. His plans can change, but his purposes are eternal. Are we learning something? So imagine for instance, um, can I use you? Come. My goal for this gentleman, everybody watch this. My goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water. You see that water? That's what I want to carry. So at the beginning of the journey, I have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of God. He reveals the end from the beginning. Then you start leaving that script. Now, this guy starting his journey, something happens. Are we together? Let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is. Now, I temporarily suspend I suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him. Are we together? That is everything that came from the law until Jesus. It was a fearing off of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position. Now, when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in Christ. Listen. So when you now come back to that position, you are supposed to continue that agenda. But when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things, the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction. Are we together? The Bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. Thank you. So there are many people doing several things. Just, just calm down with this for a moment. I want everybody to hear me. Everybody say marriage. marriage. Shout it. Marriage. Say employment. employment. Shout it. Employment. Say promotion. promotion. Say houses. houses. Say cars. 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 Say long life. Long life. Divine, health. Divine health. Bungalow. Bungalow. Just say everything I say. Duplex. Duplex. Jeep. Prosperity. Prosperity. Hold on. All those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda. In themselves, they are useless as far as God's eternal counsel is concerned. Their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this. Are we together? So marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this. Car, jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing. Let me tell you, one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life is not to have the consciousness of God's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh I made wise financial decisions and God looks at you have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire what do you think will be the basis that means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass <laughs> And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living are we together teaching people to wear nice clothes wear these and people claim cars and claim all of this all those things are only useful to the degree to which so we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself but it has no kingdom bearing are we together so someone looks at a jeep just pass and say hey i claim it and god says okay with respect to what i say god just leave me i claim it i shall claim it 
there are ways you can know immature believers and there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit when a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate that person is a mature believer are we together if I ask you what are your concerns now many of us will lift our hands and say money money sir direct money just money naira like that pounds dollars money another person will say child child this my womb must carry a child you ask the person why are you so desperate for a child you know what the person is going to say largely all the people who married uh, uh, what, around my my time have children some have two some have five some have ten i'm alone and that's the reason why the person wants a child are we together ask someone why are you going to school say are you joking you want me to be hungry abby okay if you are full what is it for say, well i'm for everybody it's like that i need to get a good job then another person says i'm not getting a good job i'm a businessman because he went to one seminar both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned if you cannot state bringing your strong reason let me tell you a chip you've heard me preach this again and again the dominion mandate remains god's desire and anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of god both the hand and the heart of god supplies don't just follow your needs they follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate prosperity long life healing all of these things pursue you when you pursue this jesus said it this way 633 matthew but seek first the kingdom kingdom he didn't say seek first heaven the kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you. Are we together? It is God's desire that we reign in life. And look at me. The concept of reigning in life has nothing to do with usurping authority over people. Please give us Genesis 1.26 again. God meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over. Let's look at it, please. 1.26. Let's hurry up. Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion read on now over what the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth notice that man was not mentioned the dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men when you do that it's called witchcraft it's called manipulation it's an attitude of the antichrist every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically at a point in time the people were angry you know why there's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated they were designed to be led they were not designed to be ruled when in bible days when god wanted to punish either his people or your enemies he gave you authority to treat them like animals so he would cause them to become slaves he would cause them to become servants he would cause them to serve you not like a man serving somebody he loves subject them to slavery slavery had always been a way of god communicating his dissatisfaction either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies listen the moment you find out an appetite to rule over men i don't mean lead men rule over men is the spirit of the antichrist there is a programming that has come from babylon that is at work in your life unfortunately this system that we live in has designed people to live that way right from primary school 
they clap for you and give you award for taking first now the idea is not whether you did well or not the idea is that you beat other people so they clap for you in their presence now their humiliation becomes your trophy are we together as you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person you see footballers when they win arsenal man you the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying and that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people is an antichrist system now of course we use it all the time some of you have schools use it the lord help you but i'm we're examining the word it's not supposed to be that way so now you find out that students from primary school secondary school their agenda is not to do well their agenda is to beat others they clap for you with respect to how you trample others that's why malpractice comes in it's an effort to force your way to the top whether you are ready or not so you manipulate ways they even name generators i pass my you see where those revelations came from they look very subtle but they are devilish understandings sponsored by babylon what is your neighbor's um, 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 what is the issue with your neighbor and your life no i pass my neighbor so you now compare yourself on healthy competition every time men try to usurp authority over men it's now going to be survival of the fittest whoever can oppress someone are we together but god's idea is to lead men not oppress them in fact they asked jesus this question who will be the greatest you see the disciples greatest greatest not who will be great who will be the greatest the chiefest of all and jesus looked at them and then he said the the pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership he said but it should not be among you whoever wants to be great must be your minister your servant that the way up is to serve people not truncate them this is a good message for a pastor's conference because we live in a time where men of god in the name of spiritual authority i believe in authority have pocketed the destinies of other people some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast where a man of god takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket he may be well-meaning but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding and they make it look like you leave me you die if i ask for money you don't ask questions if i come to your house and say rice you say yes sir beans yes sir everything yes sir and they use scripture and threaten people it is antichrist the moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will you are subscribing to another system it is not of god what of workers in the house of god you you must be a worker what of partners you promise this is your suit you are going to start sewing fifty thousand. and the guy says how about mm, I'm, I'm your boss in office i know how much i'm paying you fifty thousand that thing looks nice it is not god's way hello i know you don't like what i'm saying we're teaching on the dominion mandate many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society that passion to oppress people that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light is that true that's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened they can know their rights and they can stand up so they keep people in ignorance there are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people then we have carved out a name we call them masses masses and then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses people like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things it was smart you are a sociologist answer it but oh, that is junk I'm sure wherever he is now he has known the truth listen let me tell you you see the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today he's worth your trust are we together everything started in his presence till now hmm. 
The dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people. Listen, the dominion mandate is not about outshining people. The dominion mandate is not outshining pastors, outshining men of God. I have larger crowds than you. That means we are taking over. The concept of take over must be well defined because for many people, take over means to come and push you. You had a small church. We came and within one year, we are the ones in Zaria. We are taking over. We have to be careful because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing, it's sheep killing, sheep destruction, and so on and so forth. Let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is. It has nothing to do with outshining people. It has nothing to do with competition. No. It has everything to do with the governance of the earth. It has everything to do with the stewardship of God's system. To the end that the fullness of his glory, kabod, his essence, his lifestyle would find expression in the earth. John, uh, Matthew chapter 6, we'll read from verse um, 9 and 10. Jesus is teaching us how to pray. And then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm. And he says, give us Matthew chapter Yes, it says, after this manner, therefore pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we hallow or we revere your name. Then verse 10 says, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Your agenda, that domain you have carved out for us. We want your influence. The word kingdom is a combination of two words. A king's domain, dominion, the fair where the dominion of a king finds expression kingdom are we together now so god's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom that the reality of our stewardship the reality of the purposes of god be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven it has nothing to do with ministry it has nothing to do with usurping men. Ministry, prosperity are only tools to help us. Say prosperity is only a tool. Divine health is only a tool. So you see, when you have these things, the dominion mandate consumes you. They will never steal away God from your life. That was the mistake of the rich fool. He thought life was only about making money. When he now made money and built bands, he secured himself. Hear what he told himself. My soul find rest. In other words, I have come to the end of my pursuit. Nothing else to be done. And God says, no. This is a rich fool. Tonight, because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned. Tonight, this night, your soul is required of you. What is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate? The next teachings, I'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate. But what is the key? The key is in Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Another scripture that has not been properly understood by many. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Let's see where God will help us tonight. It says, for if by one man's offense, that one man now... Um, death reigned by one adam the first adam right adam the husband of eve for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more listen they that receive two things what's number one abundance of take note of that number two and of the gift of righteousness these are the two requirements to be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively number one the gift of righteousness the bible did not put them in the order they should come it just gave you information the first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively that mandate of exercising god's sovereign control on earth is the ability to be a possessor of what the Bible calls the gift of righteousness. Then number two, abundance, abundance of grace. The Bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities, 
can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees creativity has to do with legislature influence through your seeds through your ideas right there are many dimensions i'll be teaching you so executing authority the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion unfortunately many people come around there and they feel because i speak and some things happen i'm walking in dominion you'll be very blessed by this series it will help you to reset what you call christianity so that you will arrange things accordingly and know what your ultimate pursuit should be because there's confusion in the body of christ for many like we always teach and well-meaning and innocently the goal is heaven and that's not a lie but the bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things it's not in the bible i'm a christian are we together i believe in heaven but that's that's not it you read your bible the bible talks about this old earth and the whole heavens passing away a new earth coming and god living where he is i told you heaven listen heaven was never initially god's throne there is there was a day that there was no heaven yet god was alive and was existing the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light he created heaven and put his throne there and that's why he said heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool he is going to move that throne now to the earth so god did not used to live in heaven no he created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out the bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly these are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new jerusalem that's why our knowledge will still be unfolding are we together now we are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created genesis 1 verse 1 they were not just created just because of adam uh -uh. they were fixed back because of adam god's original idea listen carefully with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda we will find out revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are you blessed That means there are many things we are going to find out. Let me give you a few information. <laughs> Should I say this? Hmm. Some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth. They had their dispensation. Are we together? And the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture. A similitude of that event happened to them. They now are still excelling in light growing and they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit anytime you see any other thing that is not god and it's not the four living creatures we just say they are angels in a sense we are right the word is angelio a messenger they are always sent ones from the throne but in terms of classification and configuration no angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand read your bible mount zion there are many inhabitants there there are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you theologically speaking you see 
when these spirits came, you, you know the Bible talks about those we call the Nephilims and other kinds of giants who the Bible says were a product of these spirit beings. The Bible calls them sons of God. Is that true? Sons of God who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like Oak, the king of Bashan, Goliath of God, and many other people who appeared. We see that they were superhuman. Some of them had six fingers, six toes. It was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction. All of these things were part of the doctrines. It's what Paul together calls the doctrines of demons. Are we together now? It was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allowed them to have children with them. That's, that's another separate lecture again. But just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth. And if we do not stay fixed upon what authorizes our being here, we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals. Say amen. This teaching will give meaning to your prosperity. This teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer. Do you know why many people get born again and stop there? Have you seen people that when you tell them, oh, I'm praying, I'm on a program, I'm on a this and that, they look at you and say, "What? Well, that's a waste because they do not understand this. So for them, the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell. And then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes. The day you hear that trumpet, do anything you want, you are safe. You see the theology? That's a torturous and frustrating theology. Jesus said, occupy till I come. The word occupy does not mean build houses. Advance with those influence until I come. There's something we are missing. That's why our young ones are not interested in God again. Because our marketing of what we give them as Christianity is ugly and unattractive. So you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child. And then you tell the child, be born again. Then the child is born again and say, okay, daddy, what next? He say, are you asking me? Let's go to church. And he says, daddy, I'm going to church every Sunday. Now you say, I should add Wednesday. He say, oh, yeah, join baptismal class. I see that you are too idle. Then the guy joins a baptismal class. Then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination. Then the day for water baptism comes. They baptize him, give him a, an English name, and hand over a certificate. And then the child says, okay, what do I do again? He says, just continue coming to church. And he said, no, no, no. Let me, what is all this? I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God. So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriages. Don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't under... There was no logic to it. Someone comes from being a Muslim and then becomes a child of God, maybe a Christian and all of that, and you sit the person down and the person now says, okay, I have escaped this. I'm a child of God. Say, so what do I do now? Become a worker in church. Then the person is a worker in church and then one day the person says, honestly, I don't know what, what is going on here. What is the meaning of this? Where are we going? Just say, don't worry, oh, this thing, there's a reward. And the person is saying, I don't understand. Then others have said no god could not keep us like this let's add flavor to it then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter and say let's just enjoy ourselves and they say we are occupying you are not occupying that's laziness and idleness are we together so we have all just fun and play around play and play and joke and take the church of God to become like a museum or an amusement park no both are wrong let me tell you when you know the dominion mandate you will be so busy you will not even you will think age is not on your side you see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency they, they are, the issue of heaven is settled see let me tell you 
Um, we are going, I hope that one of these series will look at redemption. And I'm going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not, is not supposed to be a frightful thing. Are we together? The issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university. When you have an admission letter, it is possible to lose the admission letter. But you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter. No. You have lectures. Is that true? You are looking at something else. Imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving. Where's my admission letter? And he opens the box and sees it and keeps it. And says, ah, thank you, Jesus. That's what we do with this rapture heaven thing. I'm not against it. You know me. I love people. I love souls. But having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective. That's why we don't treasure creativity. That's why we don't treasure dominion. Why? Because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful. God can come any day and any time. Let him just come and find me. You're, you're being fit. Going to heaven. Listen. Going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification. You have to understand this. The part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns. Is based on your works. Utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it, with it will determine your rewards. We will not get the same rewards. When a child is born, we say he came from where? Please help me. <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back. Uh, okay, let me not, let's, let's not talk about this thing. I don't want to make us feel very bad. I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. The book of life, rapture, heaven, the conditions for heaven, and all of that. Because you see, the Bible lets us know clearly that what the Bible calls, what we have called the judgment day, is a season of reward for the saints. The Bible clearly lists those who will be punished, who should be afraid. Why should I be in Christ why should I be walking with God and my life is perpetually a subject of fear? Fear. Those things look nice. You know, sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives. But it's impossible to serve God that way. There was a time I think there was a propaganda. There have been many about the coming of Christ. And people till today, people still come up with visions. I saw that Jesus Christ is coming in August 24th. And you see people, people sold their houses, land that they would have been rich now. Their children are suffering. Foolish people made stupid business decisions, gave away land. You know, people shaved their head. They were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that. And nothing really happened. God does not teach us to wait for him this way. The Bible already tells us that the coming of Christ will be like the days of Noah. Let me tell you. Let me, I'm sharing with you the dominion mandate. The coming of Christ will not take believers unaware. Did you hear what I said? The coming of Christ, I repeat, will not take believers unaware. Please give me 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We are reading 1 to 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Is God helping us? We are going to find someone and pray tonight. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times, please look up. Whether you are inside, outside, I want us to read it together. Okay, I'll read it. I'll tell you where to join. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. So he's talking to who? Brethren, the church. Is that true? Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Many theologians, well-meaning, stop here. And they keep telling people he's coming like a thief in the night and coming like it. The Bible did not stop here. It was Paul himself who had his revelation, uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation. Are we together? Verse 3. For when they shall say, those who are without, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they, 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 they shall not escape. If you're a child of God, read the next verse with all your heart. One, two, give us verse four, please, quickly. One, two, 
read one more time so if that day overtakes you what is the sign that you are in darkness is that true the bible says we are the light of the world is that true it says but ye brethren I'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons and I am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of Noah that day look at it it's in your bible I didn't write this that day will not overtake you as a thief why because the spirit of God is in us there is a salt covenant we are joined he that is joined to Christ is one spirit are we together you can never serve God when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell growing up there used to be a word that the old folks used to use assurance of not salvation assurance of salvation assurance of admission letter assurance of job that's why every time they give you a job they give you a little paper is a token to prove to you that you are there the bible says god gave us his spirit as a proof as a seal of our redemption as a proof that we are now the begotten of him that he's no longer the firstborn um the only begotten he's now the first begotten of we the brethren are we together now so that God is not ashamed he's not ashamed to call us brethren but has given us the same spirit whereby we cry Abba Father it doesn't mean people don't backslide it doesn't mean people don't derail but I want you to know this there is a way we have been teaching. I'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate. 80% of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture. And I'm not against books. I know that there are books that have been written. There are encounters. Am I boring you? This is a foundation. Because several of us are living in fear. You don't even know what to believe. You are afraid. You are sitting, you are standing and you are wondering. And they tell you if God comes and just when you are, you know, maybe shouting at somebody, that's the end of it. If he comes to meet you shouting. You see that? And so we walk in all kinds of fear. Even when we go before God. There is no confidence in approaching him. I believe in repentance. You know me. I always balance things. It's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it. There are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth. When you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word, it will still lead to error. I believe in repentance. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves, true or false. A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, you are this and neither of you to help us kill these people and let's escape and go and you see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, Ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. Why? For believing me. For believing me. For believing my innocence. Whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the Spirit of God. Because no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. To say Jesus is Lord does not mean J-E-S-U-S-I-S-L-O-R-D. No, that's not it. The Lordship of Jesus is declared by revelation. Our announcing it is simply a product of, it's not the reason. No. That's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, while they yet, Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on them. There are so many things in my spirit we have to free ourselves 
The average Christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what he should do for God. Even what we, when we talk about purpose, most people think purpose is just for graduates. You are a graduate, your purpose is whatever you studied, do something with it, get married, train your children and give some money to the church and God will help you. That is a fruitless life. It truly is a fruitless life. The dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire, fear of heaven, fear of rapture. And there are books that keep coming. Every time you go online and just Google it, some of you, oh, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw rapture. It may not be a lie. The impact of revelations can cause you to be biased if the Holy Spirit does not balance you. You can be caught up in an event and see the rapture happen and the catastrophe that happened and if God does not give you balance you can return back to earth and start harassing everybody brother be prepared I'm late for work I'm telling you that Jesus is coming and you know and all and you make people feel guilty and pastors sometimes we are gullible because there are members that bully us I want to come and teach a series I had a seven days revelation about rapture I need to come and teach people and they come and stand and at the end of that teaching you wonder whether God is really love there are those who have seen every pastor in hell listen to my message revelation uh, what was it called reality of heaven and hell there are people who have seen Satan found out that this is a very useful tool. So those who started having these experiences, Satan can appear as an angel of light. Are we learning? He now began to open people through experiences. It is true that they left it. It is true that they were somewhere. It is true that they saw tears, similitudes, and they returned back to destroy people. Let me tell you something. This issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love God and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today. If I say it right now, if you know you are going to heaven, don't stand up. But if I say stand up, some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed. So that if somebody will say, we are praying together, you mean you don't even know where you are going. You are not my friend again. But the truth is many people don't know. For many people, this is our theology. Let's just keep watching. The day the trumpet sounds, if I make it glory to be to, be to Jesus. No. So we preoccupy our minds and never do anything. Are we together? We never do anything. It has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries. Ah, I need, there's an urgency in my spirit. I need to preach the gospel. Jesus can come, you know, any day, any time. Honey, there is no food. That's not the issue. Let's just pay the price. God knows when he comes, he will reward us. And the wife is saying, what are you saying? There's no food in the house. Nothing is happening. And at the end of it, the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch. Call the children he gave birth to the five children witches. Leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say, I'm going to the mission field. And then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them. You see what is happening all around? Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. There has never been any stadium-like crusade with any evangelism. But you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate. Occupy structures, systems, everywhere until I come. Listen, brothers and sisters. If we do not get this straight, we are going to live very useless lives. The most heat of this tragedy is the north. Northern Christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant. You know why? Because the Christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical. Are we together? And which was correct. But I'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives their families it's in the north you can see one man with 
five, six children staying in a small room and he tells you, look, what is the use of building a house? I saw a vision and I know that when Jesus comes, call me Banzane. You hear them say it and they, they threaten your visionary attitude. Oh, I want to build a house. I want to do this. All those things are useless. When the the motto, when the buy the motto, yes, you also call me Banzane. And then we say those things. They look very nice. They look appealing, and they are responsible for the pain that many families, the pain that many churches, the pain and the decadence that happens in the society. Nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying, after all, Jesus is coming. The concept of Jesus is coming is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness. Jesus is coming should ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a, uh, as a faithful servant. This mistake was adumbrated in Matthew 25. He gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The man with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, two, um profitable servant and those who spend their time multiplying it listen to what he told them he said well done good and faithful servant one of the synoptics says I appoint to you kingdoms that's the reward are we together Jesus is coming soon should never threaten the dominion mandate the consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate. Hey, look at me, church. The dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people. Most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for Pentecostals. So whenever we are talking about Amvasi the kingdom, they look at great people like our fathers, Bishop Oedeko and the rest, and say these people are just carnal. All they are thinking about is university. Jesus is coming soon. All they are thinking about is empowering people, prosperity all this money money thing and you see bloggers writing in ignorance we made that mistake and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools because the missionaries that came and other orthodox ministries like catholic equa you know and all of that they built schools is that true they built hospitals that, that was a, a mindset of the dominion mandate Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people so although they did not like their gospel they still gave them land and gave them space today we are losing this and there are no good schools again you cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly the mission schools no longer have money and support you know why because those to support them said no we are closer to rapture there is no need supporting you let us just wait jesus is coming many of us here are already having that mindset it must change tonight being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility and sitting down to say oh let me make sure i don't talk no he comes to meet you like that he calls you an unprofitable servant are we blessed we are going to pray i wish i had time we will continue next week the gift of righteousness righteousness like kenyon would say um, would define he calls it the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation as i've learned about righteousness i found out is deeper than that revelation is progressive you know that kenyon died long ago are we together if kenyon were still alive he would have upgraded a lot of things righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the father righteousness is the very nature of god god's nature are we together not just doing right God's nature, his rightness before the Father 
is what was imparted upon us listen there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of god the bible calls us now the righteousness of god that's why he calls it a gift everybody say it is a gift say it again it's a gift now every gift god gives you you use those gifts to produce fruits read the bible gifts go with fruits gifts fruits gifts fruits the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the gift of the spirit is god's benevolence to you the fruit of the spirit is a product of your own alignment it is your own participation in the equation there is the gift of righteousness there is the fruit of righteousness the outworkings of righteousness hallelujah listen the first thing any believer needs is to possess the gift of righteousness it is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the holy spirit to come upon you listen you cannot have the holy spirit without the gift of righteousness it's impossible there are progressions the first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regime please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first adam the fallen nature the nature of the first adam is the nature that is corrupted is the nature that is called sin sin is not just something you do sin is a nature that comes to every man he said in sin did my mother conceive me the true concept of sin is not the things that are done the true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you that compels you to be a slave to it and then execute a lot of things so the first thing that must happen to any man is birth the second is rebirth 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 what is rebirth an impartation of the nature and the image of christ in that man hallelujah these are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate the bible says this let me tell you what the bible says we're rounding up give give me please give me first peter chapter 1 verse 23 i think 22 23 first peter chapter 1 22 23 um i'm looking for one i'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses first peter being born again being born again everybody listen this born again thing is a big deal being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abided forever being born again or being saved as we call it is not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event listen that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience it is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate the bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man that mediator of the new covenant jesus himself the foundation of our work in the kingdom the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with jesus the pattern man the portrait jesus himself the bible says looking up to him he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer whenever we talk kingdom whenever we talk of anything the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is jesus you begin to trace your compass from him whenever you draw any bearing outside of the christ that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error christ is the standard we start with him and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ 
that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regene because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes the gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give you can reject it that's why the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that i am part of the brethren i have a right to call abba father i have a right to call abba father he is not just your father he is not just the god of joshua selman that's a different dimension he is now our father that's why paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth we are now one big family under the same lord under the same faith under the same baptism paul was teaching there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism we have been immersed into the same experience the foundation please hear me is not impartation impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness teaching all the principles that i teach you on success and all of that as important as they are they cannot give you the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness is freely given the custodian the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is jesus the christ his office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life handling the gift of righteousness the holy spirit is only an enforcer he comes with respect in honor to your believing jesus you don't believe the holy spirit and receive the gift of righteousness no you don't believe the father and receive the gift of righteousness the same way it is not the vc signature that is on your admission letter it is the registrar but it's not the highest authority it is his office is that true so the office of the christ is responsible for allocating this when you stand and believe his report that message the reward for believing it is that the christ authorizes the spirit of god to come to you so when you come out for an altar call you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing you don't feel anything physically you stand and heaven is watching the sun is watching lord jesus i believe in this i believe in that and while you are saying it jesus vets the sincerity of your confession and on grounds of that truth the spirit of god comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the bible tells us like joshua the high priest in zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as god's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured through knowledge and understanding grace and peace 
be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign God is counting on us to fulfill this mandate God is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers what then is the next step the next step after rebirth is discipleship write the word down we have abused that word discipleship discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign what is happening right now in koinonia is discipleship the word has become so ugly most people don't even want to hear it because for many people discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system submitting under all sorts of things no we need discipleship it is God's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom and this is why God gave apostles this is why God gave prophets. Listen, this is why God gave evangelists. Are you seeing where we now come into the equation? We were never there from beginning. The apostolic ministry, the prophetic ministry as we know it now, is not an eternal ministry. They are not eternal. No. Jesus is not in heaven today just as our apostle. No. When he sat upon that throne, we still call him the apostle of our faith. But his ministry now number one is lord number two is an as an intercessor the bible says he makes intercession for the saints even if i prophesy the bible says it will end is that true even prophecies will end even tongues will end so a day will come when god will look at us and say pastor alpha come well done good and faithful servant i put you over destiny makers international and you walked with them you did a great job i see the devils that you casted i see the sick bodies you have done well well done enter into the rest there is a new assignment that is going to be given to you a day will come god will look at me and say apostle oh joshua selma he won't call me apostle <laughs> whatever he calls me he's right <laughs> hallelujah and then he will congratulate me and say well done for the labor they laughed at you but you continued you served and when they are doing it some of you who laughed at me will be watching that will be such a gallant ceremony this is what will happen in heaven and while that handshake is going on well done good and faithful servant we are smiling in glory and rejoicing we have conquered life we occupied well till he came and he says because of the TV station you people set up we have here in the record in heaven over 1 billion souls came because of this television ministry ah. surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus you know that song I can only imagine some of you let me tell you what will happen in heaven you will stand you are happy you got there but you will be ashamed i hope you know there's shame in heaven oh yes go and read your bible there is you stand no souls no partnership no blessing you gossiped and said everything the gift of righteousness brought you to heaven well done and there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals men who they did all kinds of things you will see them there age 33 standing there happy because 33 is the standard right and you will see them stand and the matthias crown will be put on them 
all kinds of people and you will stand there no crown no applause because you just said jesus is coming the the old hymn we used to sing only remembered for what we have done remember that hymn yes we must train believers to reign we don't train believers to become our church members pastors you don't train believers so that i can get church members this member consciousness is destroying god's dominion mandate god's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being called apostle joshua selman and every sunday the man of god is here god's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign are we together the next dimension after reigning is called governance god begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains spheres of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for God no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of God is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be Christianity in quote but that's not kingdom hallelujah we're going to pray our time is up I gave this illustration to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of gucci designers louis vuitton and all of those things are only the fringe benefits are we together they are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective so you don't rejoice and say look i am enjoying why look at my house look at five cars look at ten shoes look at trips abroad and you put them like crowns whoever talks like that does not know god and does not understand the dominion mandate so my pride and your pride is not in our cars have the cars but that's not the pride the pride is not that you are now wearing a hair of two hundred and fifty thousand. that is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom your pride is that god gave me money and i walked the systems of the kingdom because i understood i would be a kingdom financier and i used that money i sponsored a tv station that now created a platform for people to receive jesus for people to rise for people to be built i built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for god i was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating pat you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call christianity we come and jump around and say my faith is working why i have 30 suits look at my picture with the owner of so 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 and so oil company and you gather them around and live your entire life while you are old you just say you know i lived a successful life that's a wasted life a life of purpose and a life of meaning is a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate what is it take charge what is it expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men 
you must establish Christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a Christian and you are not winning souls God is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate now that you are born again apostle i don't know what to do return back to the dominion mandate now that you have received the the gift of righteousness contend for the abundance of grace how does it come grace and peace comes through knowledge multiplication through knowledge access it takes a long time the bible says you don't just reign with grace that grace must be lavish it must be in abundance that means you must be a bank of knowledge you must be a bank of understanding you must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries and on the strength of those mysteries i'm trusting that god will make someone's life marvelous the key listen the key is not running around the key is staying Martha, you are worried and offended about many things but one thing is needful oh god i should have had five children now don't you know you can give you one child that is like a nation oh god i've been crying about that job when we talk about intimacy with god many busy people think it's a waste of time no 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 look i teach us some no no if i followed that route i would have been a failure today a big failure not ashamed you are the power in me you are the fire at work in me you are my ever present helper holy spirit I how do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth just like that how do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life there are people here now with situations that doctors have written you off even a charm cannot solve it you need a commodity that is not available in the earth I told you the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference in a few minutes from now 10 years problems will just leave just like that no 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 that's what happens when you value him that's what happens that's what happens listen when you honor a man of God you don't just honor a body you honor the sacrifice the sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility listen to me all men are not equal no sir it's, it's a very harsh statement but it's the truth we are equal in Christ but our sacrifices and the election of grace has separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man the holy spirit we are going to begin to pray but I, I i i just four things the holy spirit you don't know him you are in trouble you will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve you didn't study everything you had a degree in an area having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom no sir that information is too small to define the quality of your life ministry you need him you want to succeed in life you don't just need information you need a person hallelujah 
Holy Spirit. It's grace and glory. I trust that God will initiate people into that dimension of grace, of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy seven people seven people seven people seven people call your people oh God an initiation into a dimension of intimacy the sister outside for he will be real to you real to you by his spirit this is not an issue of jamboree it's not an issue of feeling anointed it's working with a person it will make your life a wonder a wonder a wonder he will make your life a wonder he will not just give you anointing he will walk with you walk with you so you become an effulgence of that grace then you can say that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled thank you Oh my Father, for giving me your Son and leaving your Spirit, your work in my life is done. I thank you. Oh, my Father, for giving me your Son and me your Spirit, your work on earth. Please sit down if you can. The third thing that you must know is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. We'll soon arise to pray. Sensitive. Ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady. Jumping out of a lake. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Forever faithful towards me. You're always provided for me. Praise your mercy towards me. Praise your allow the Holy Spirit to flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction 
I see a map in the spirit. Southern Kaduna. Let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle. It's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Shabrakatos kelabrande katai. Lekatekos sotopalia. Lift them, oh God. I hear my spirit lifting, lifting, lifting. He's raising you, raising you by his spirit, raising you. There is an unction that makes this possible, raising you by his spirit. I hope I'll be able to finish this. The mysteries of the kingdom. That's the third thing that you must seek to know. Not just the word of God. Not just Rema. The mysteries. There is a lady in overflow three. One is here. Two is the one by the road. Three is the one by the empty land. There is a lady overflow three. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her. Please, I want, I want her to come. Overflow three. I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building, right down there. Please sit down. Let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk. There are so many people. You must access the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say mysteries. A mystery is a secret code of operation. The kingdom of God operates based on systems. And you see, these mysteries contain in them the revelations of God. The revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power. I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power. The first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles. The second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship. Two dimensions of God's power. So you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension. The moment a principle is consistent with the character of God, it will release a dimension of the power of God, like tithing, like sowing and reaping, like being responsible, like mentorship. All of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character. You must access the principles of the kingdom. Therein lies the key to your dominion. It is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do. You must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire. Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration? You know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. But what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility? Because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No! No. Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand. The power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need. The same way if I stand with you and I have, say, tuberculosis, you're a doctor. Doctor, if I have tuberculosis and you stand near me, must I believe in you to receive it? No, listen to me carefully. Are we together now? I'm standing close to you. It vetoes whether I agree with you. I can even be insulting you. But that's none of the business of the tuberculosis. Once there is proximity, it will enter you. 
you will live angry but you must receive it so if i can transfer sickness why can i not transfer health are you seeing that now that means i can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you life being the light of men you see that that's the concept of whatsoever is born of god not whosoever whatsoever is born of god can overcome not by jacking yourself and understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit where you can walk in it so you can come with a challenge you can come with a sickness like some of you are here now trusting god all kinds of impossible situations they've told you it cannot be solved they are right based on their understanding this is a doctor they are not wrong based on their understanding but god's god's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities you see he says with god with god watch this i've taught you alone it is impossible but with god with god alone i cannot call but with my phone with in partnership with god all things all things all things are possible i want you to look at the situation you came here with for the last time tonight because in the name of the lord god of heaven it will go hmm. my assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe not the power that governs nigeria not the power that governs un the power that created the heavens and the earth for he upholds all things by the word of his power number three that's it there mysteries so number one you must know god number two that's redemption and everything that concerns god in the person of jesus number two you must understand the ministry of the holy spirit the third thing you must have access to the word you must crave for accurate understanding number four this is a mystery i believe that has been known by very few and i truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that god has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body the fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of the body of christ this strategy called the body of christ the body of Christ is not just people. The body of Christ, many people say the body of Christ is not just a church. There are people. The body of Christ is not people. The body of Christ is a strategy. The only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of God is called Ecclesia, the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not a people. It's a strategy. That's why he said, I will build it. I will build it. He didn't say, I will make it. I will build it like a formula like a plan and I will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable the gates of hell will not prevail against it there is a formation that the body of Christ is built it is so formidable the gate of hell can only touch members not the body the body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of god first corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is say for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of god he said for this cause many are weak limited for this cause many are sickly and for this cause many sleep when was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body that's what killed him please pay attention get my teachings discerning the body that whole series you have to listen if you are in ministry here or you are a church leader a deacon you have to listen to it if not you will never rise a body has thou prepared for me it was prepared to be used a formidable strategy that beats hell hands down 
it's called the body of Christ everything is available in the body listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of God it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and Ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula Christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after Christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only God they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message I'm just doing a quick recap because I'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully I told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with God that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner God wants to be known and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with God your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when God wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of God without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is Abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now Elijah represents God's system of purifying and preparing men for revival Elijah is not a man Elijah is a system I've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in Noah Elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the Lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people Elijah must come that's why Elijah is still alive God's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of God is called Elijah is a system the man Elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the Antichrist is a system not just a person you see that Peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the Holy Spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with Benny Hinn. you see that Benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body Kenneth Copeland today represents God's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body 
designing the body is different from destiny helpers destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that god anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now i can't criticize papa Ia Deboy and bishop oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible carry posters everywhere it will not happen there is a system this is not publicity it's a spiritual reality so in honor of what they represent i am authorized to access that reality that's why you are here tonight let me tell you something listen carefully you see this thing you call koinonia koinonia is not a ministry koinonia is a system you have to believe this it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship it's not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of God I, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to Mount Zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of God trying to shine his ministry no tonight you are standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in God please listen to me you are standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you're about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now. Hello, him of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him of
Jesus, I believe your power is here. Let your power give me a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Let it end every captivity by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it break every burden in my life. Hallelujah. Keep standing, everyone. I want to make an altar call quickly. Right now, everyone stand. There are people here, overflow one, two, three, following us online in this place right now. The Bible says this life is in his son. You don't hear about the son and receive life. You meet the son. There are people standing here, men and women scattered around. You are a pastor, leader, deacon, gentleman, lady, old, young, rich, poor, regardless of your status. Jesus said, ye must be born again. There are people here who have not met Jesus. We have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. You are here inside and outside. You have heard what I said. And whilst I was speaking, the Spirit of God, the one we so honor, was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God and then you've been here and for some reason you've been one leg in and one leg out loved God was on fire but different things happened somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of God can I join them most welcome I want to count one to five and um, now this is how we we'll do it I want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain right now one quickly quickly run to Jesus from the depth of your heart you can keep standing you don't have to lie down or kneel down God bless you you don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. Man of God, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you three are you coming apostle I'm trying to come out but my neighbor is stopping me we rebuke that spirit trying to stop you come out come to Jesus Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you. I think we have enough people inside now. Every other person that comes, just direct them to their various overflows outside. Those coming from outside, you can wait there now. In every moment, I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way me. Hallelujah. Madam, look at me. You, you love Jesus Christ? Come. I'm seeing you. You are not working well. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Who brought her? Because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain. Come. What's wrong with you? From where are you? Program. So she now called me that I should come and attend the program. So For I have diabetes and ulcer. And my back pain here, from the back here down to my leg. Everything. Yes. I'm feeling the pain very well. 
That is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here. So that is why I came here. Mommy, look at me. Every one of them, you heard what I said? Everyone will leave you here and you will go back to Abuja. Amen. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Of course, if it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, Thy sins be forgiven. And people say, Ah, what is this? And Jesus said, Which is easier? Hi! That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy. It's not just recitation. Are we together? Mama, I'll pray for you. Go back and join them. Those of you standing here, the overflow, lift your right hand and sincerely, you are not reciting a point. From the depth of your heart, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. No, some of you are crying, but don't worry. Jesus sees your tears. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. You shed your blood for me. You rose again for me. And tonight, I receive your life. I receive your grace. I receive your spirit. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus. Victory is given to me over sin, over the flesh, and over the world in Jesus' name. Please keep your hands lifted. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of sin, the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today. The Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to do something for me very quickly. Please cooperate with all the people, um, whether outside any of the overflows. There is a gentleman waving his hand, some um, of the... Uh, ushers there i want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you so do that very very quickly very quickly madam i will pray for you you go and write your name and come back while we are waiting for them please make sure we are going to be very fast you see that our time is gone so it's going to be a very quick walk very quick walk we're going straight to the business of the night and i want you to believe it doesn't take time it only takes god it doesn't take time it only takes god very very quickly very very quickly we're going to trust the lord to please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of jesus Please be serious in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every spirit, every force, every influence standing against God's word over my life, I declare that you are under judgment tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Shala bras kada baladia. Shabratas kala brato shobrige de balada balada ba. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one. 
until there is total victory don't let the challenge don't let the challenge limit you take your eyes away from it and pray Are you praying inside and outside? Thank you, Jesus. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Sing it one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent such a strong anointing in this place tonight lift your hands and just be silent please i'm seeing two numbers five and one and the lord is saying there are 51 people here 51 people he's bringing massive deliverance to their families I want you to bring them out 51 people don't shout don't do nothing just keep your hands the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows right now I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve right now I release the ministry of angels Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Break it to Shobrata Kalabras Kalabriata. Sapras Katabrakatele Katia Labas. So break it Ali Pras Kabariata. Embreko to Soto Pareketa. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigala para koto soto balada. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty in God. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Second in Akata. Keep your hands lifted. Malekete prekete la kaya. Ay 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 ay. Mighty on the road. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. Help that lady please. You are mighty on the Break forth. Down fountains of the deep. And we had us mighty on your Aye. Keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes. That's what I'm seeing. Just flying up. Snakes. I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence. Right now, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. 
Mateketa, Lekete Prakata. I put the word of God upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus, I release upon it the power to perform. Shakatakata, those influences. In the name of Jesus, I release judgment, 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 judgment upon every strange influence limiting the life of God's people. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep that voice. You reign, you Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Jesus, I'm seeing gates, gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Be open by the unction of the Spirit. Gates be open. Ephata be open. The gate must open. Tonight is a miracle service. I prophesied the two lift gate be open. The two lift gate. Many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, I see gates, gates of destinies, gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft, gates over families. No progress, no results. I come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. A gate is what gives a man access. Access into a place. Access out of a place. The Bible says to open the doors of prison. There are men who are moving. But they are under prison. There's nothing, hear me. You may be here listening to me. There's nothing you do that works. No matter how you try. Seek advice, it will not work. No matter what you do. You are not bad, you are not lazy. But there is a spirit. But right now, lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. One more time. I come against the spirit that stand as gatekeepers over the victory of people over the life of people at the count of three i want you to shout that name the name that is a key that opens the gate one two three i open it i open it i open it online outside i command it to open i command it to open Locked by ancestry, locked by divination, locked by necromancy and projection, manipulation of the constellations. I command in the name of He that holds the key of David, I command that door be open, that no power can shut. Be sensitive tonight. The spirit of God is moving. One of the ushers. One of the ushers. You are an usher. But the unction of the spirit. Help her. Visiting your family. Visiting your family. Visiting your family. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married. No children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Hello, Thy kingdom come. I will be blessed. Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady. But there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map. Benway. Benway. Benway people get ready. Benway. 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 I see Benway. And the Lord says, stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway. I stretch my hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit visiting people. Benway. 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 By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Hear me. And I'm hearing in my spirit, break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means. But this is something that has to do with a covenant involving women. I arrest it right now. In the name of Jesus, I see fire dropping right now. People from Benway, you are from Benway, you come under this influence. Please help that. Yes. Benway, Benway, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God, traveling to Benway, breaking covenant. I speak to the soil of that land, release the destinies tied with you. Listen, what I'm seeing is not good. The Lord is taking me to a vision, and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees. This is Otuko, black ropes tied around trees. And the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. At the count of three, may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded, I command it right now upon every shrine, every activity of darkness. In the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Hallelujah. The supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements. Listen. Without one or more of these elements, the supernatural cannot find expression. Guy, I'm seeing a wild this is a serpent. I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again. I'm seeing a serpent. I stretch my hands. The Bible says, For the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen carefully. Five elements of the supernatural. Number one is light. The supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light. Number two, the air, sound. The supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound. Number three, the earth. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every living thing makes contact with it. Number three. Are we together? Number four, water. The mystery that bears witness. Water is not an entity. Water is history. Water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit. Contained within it are more mysteries than we understand. Number five, fire. A mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is God can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing purify gold and destroy the impurities I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural because everyone is standing on the ground 
I want to pray for you. The Lord is asking me to break delay. Please just follow me. We are coming to the sick people. But just follow me tonight. Let's walk circumspectly. I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down. They cannot move. You are here. No matter what you do, there is no progress. This is the story of your family. Look at me. The Lord wants to visit you first, even before your family. Your two sisters, they are married, no child. Are you married? You are not married. We have to pray. I don't know if you will believe what I'm telling you, but God is raising you to be a savior in your family. Believe this thing, no. You may not look like it, but it is the spirit of Deborah. But first and foremost, you must be delivered first. God is not finished with her. I command that devil, go. There is no hiding in his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God whom I serve, I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now. Over your sisters, over your life and over your family, I command them to be broken right now. I release upon you grace for restoration. In the name of Jesus, and I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men. I release that grace upon you. I want you to go and tell your sisters the Lord brings a visitation to them. Even as he did to Hannah at Shiloh, the Lord comes for them with strange visitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now all those under the anointing, I command the spirits. Any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims. Therefore, in the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you know my voice. I represent his majesty. At the count of three, you must let them go now and forever. One, two, three, be gone. Go! Out of their lives, destinies, now and forever. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. For when a thief is caught, he's made to pay back tenfold. I command recovery in the name of Jesus. Let them go. There is no hiding, for his light shines upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if there is any project you are involved in, lift your hand. Any project, business project, building project, please just lift your hands. Before I pray, we pray the prayer that will release speed. Projects. Ah. I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place. And I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here. There is a visitation that is coming for the people here. Therefore, I stretch my hands. Lord, your will be done. I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that unction and that grace. Everyone within this vicinity, let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles. Help them in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, everyone is standing. I want to pray for you. Please. Listen, there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life. It's not a doctrine. It's an experience. Where a man can make progress spiritually, financially, business-wise. If you are in a position for a long time, it's a sign that something is wrong. Are we together? It says, ye have come past this mountain long enough. Then it tells you the formula. The door is in the north. He said, turn northwards. Turn northwards. You have come past this mountain long enough. I want you to stand on the ground. I see physical fire rising and sweeping, consuming people's feet. Some of you, as this is happening, you will hear the sounds of physical chains. Literally, physical chains. This will happen. I want us to shout the name of Jesus three times. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling me. I will lead you and you will shout it. The third time, the chains of delay 
and stagnation will will break open many of you physically physically you feel it happening thank you jesus let the word of god come upon this prophecy are you ready now number one are you ready number two now i want you to get ready that grace that came upon elijah and caused him to run overtaking the chariots of ahas speed and advancement is coming on people right now are you ready shout jesus receive it now receive it now let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement I command you to advance. I command you to move forward. I break limitations. I break limitations. I command advancement. Outside advancement. The overflows advancement. May that anointing hit you. Advancement. 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 Advancement in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. No power can stop you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than men. Help me. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Yeah. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God. Our God. Please stretch your hands towards me. Don't lift it up, stretch it towards me. There is, there is going to be an activation of strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. The time for impartation will come. But fire is living and is coming upon people. And the Lord said, let them stretch their hands. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands back to you. In the name of Jesus. Gifts, gifts, gifts. Don't man gifts. Don't man gift. Where is it? I call it forth now. Don't man gift. Don't man gift. You may not know it's there. I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit. I'm talking of potentials. Gifts, gifts. I stir it up right now. Like a well. I command it. Like the axe head, I command it to float right now. I command it to float right now. Gifts that will bring you honor. Gifts. Gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts. There is a lady. I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit. You are dressed in something that looks like orange, like the house are dressing from your head to who is that? Who is that? Come from this row. Jesus praise. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer, and you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate me. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now. Inside. Inside. It's a strange miracle coming for that person. The ninth row. Supernatural manifestation of the power of God. 
my sister what do you want the lord to do in your life uh -uh. you are just generalizing huh i'm looking at you and then i'm seeing your heart and i'm seeing should i say it do you believe you can are you married huh where's your husband did you come with him what do you want the lord to do for him see this man is your real prayer that's that's you want the lord to honor him and what what is he doing now i'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place that has been your desire go and tell him that a man of god has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it maimuna is it maimuna or something i'm hearing a name maimuna 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 i wish we had time today but we have to pray for the sick i want us to leave this very fast because i'm going to counsel well just leave her i found the person but but you come my dear i want to pray who is this no 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 it's not just any grace i'll pray for you my dear lift your hands god wants to visit your family there are four people here a very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now no 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 four of you right now a strong power is hitting you right now just in this this place outside i don't know what it is about this place maybe the miracle services will start coming here now there is there's real faith in this place my dear i end it now i end it now in the name of jesus christ keep your hands on her stomach i end it now i command that reproach taken from your life in the name of jesus don't come out for social reasons but i'm seeing a lady here you have suffered a very terrible infection this is a, a woman issue a terrible infection this thing you have treated it and done everything you know to do but it has refused to go this is witchcraft it's not just a normal infection you have spent your money but right now the lord is saying i should prophesy to you that it comes to an end complete end right now in the name of jesus christ complete end i stretch my hands four people right now here in this world lord where are they one is a lady three are gentlemen step into that dimension that's right help them thank you jesus hold on there is a mother here god wants to wipe yes madam who is a gala here hold on you are a gala from where from where Oppo. where is that is there a place like that in the gala land huh in kogi state so that you don't come and tell us lies if, if you are not from there just wait there is your turn to come from lift your hands i'm seeing an attack on your life and your family and the lord is too free madam where is your child did you come with your child There's no time to waste, please. I'll just pray for you so that we can go. In the name of witchcraft, now. And on you right now. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it, in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimony.
openings. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Those outside, are you praying? Lift your voice and begin to pray. Kai, one of the things, listen, hold on. I'm seeing, now I want you to believe it. I just looked up and I started hearing the cry of, as if babies just fill the room. Listen carefully. I just lifted, I wanted to move and I just lifted my eyes. And the Lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children. If you are standing in for barrenness, whether you are in any overflow, please come in. I want to minister to you by myself. Barrenness, only barrenness, please. Husband and wife, if you are standing for barrenness, except you are standing in for someone, if you are standing alone, you must be married. Praise God. If you are standing alone, you must be married. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. You can go, you can go, Pastor Alpha. Now, we are going to pray. And while they are doing that, let's buy time. Ushers, move around all the overflows. Make sure you collect the request of everybody. I noticed overflow three, there are few people attending to them there. So let's have people. You see why we need more ushers and we need more people. Say after me, Father. Everyone shout it, Father. We receive your visitation in the name of Jesus. We receive miracles, signs, and wonders. Now please accept they ask you. You don't have to tell them what is wrong. Don't worry. The hand of God is here to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the praise. Those online, I want you to connect by faith and trust the power of God to touch you. We have very few minutes to do this and in the name of Jesus will be done. No matter what the issue is, as we touch you, start checking yourself. You can register your testimony. We'll take it on Friday. Whether you are standing in for someone, don't worry. The power of God is there to touch you in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. Do you know why I came here? Because I saw that this woman, your issue is not just healing. Hold on. I saw the, her holding pictures and a passport. And then I'm looking at it. And I saw a plane. Is it something like you were staying outside the country? Is that true? Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing a woman, a plane, bringing you. Is that true? Uh -uh. And the Lord is opening my eyes. I'm seeing another vision. I'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man. Like your husband. And that man drove you. Yes, sir. He drove? Yes, sir. From where? From abroad. Where is abroad? Qatar. From where? Where is he? This is you? Ah. One week. Oh my God. This is a baby. Look at me. Why did he drive you away? You see why prophecy is powerful. Look at this woman. Come, madam. I looked at these things and the Lord told me that this woman needs help. I know I'm taking time, but let's attend. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. Where were you before? No other man. We are together in our We are together. I, were you married? Yes, sir. You are from where? Benway State, sir. You are from Benway? Yes, sir. You see, I told you what God was saying about Benway. You you married him and went abroad? Yes, sir. Then what happened? He said, as you come back, my paper is having an issue. Not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community. So he left. married another woman? Yeah, from my same community, sir. He's staying abroad with her? Yes, he drove you away with the baby. Yes, sir. No, he, uh, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. <laughs> Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said to come see, back. Man, listen. This this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now I don't mean no disrespect. But you see why ladies will tell you people to marry people who are born again not just people who have money huh? don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe, one bag and just carry you around like that it must be godly look at what this man did for this woman one week and left her with this innocent child, so where are you staying now? I'm staying in Abuja so my it's from Abuja you came? yes sir 
What do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, And she still came and married. Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Yes. Daddy, yes. please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. He's from, okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a Benin state. You are suffering. Hi. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this? This, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, is what witchcraft looks like. Are you seeing this? Whether you are in Qatar or wherever, if that spirit is not destroyed, this is what it will do. Because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman. But she didn't look, if you see this woman, does she look like somebody who has gone abroad? I'm not insulting you. You can see that this woman was not even treated well. Suffered with the man. Now we went abroad and sent her back. When this baby now, if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby, when this baby becomes responsible, the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back. Then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid. You are using the baby to make to get power. You see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together Holy Shem, help me you're the god of awesome one he stood up your power The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even. No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible said, What God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare. The favor that was on Esther, that made Hadassah look at her once and had to call her to be his queen. May that favor come upon you. Listen, don't go to any native doctor. You hear me because i'm seeing one mama coming to you in abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody she told you he's a man of god he's a native doctor don't go anywhere huh? and number two anybody that says you should bring one naira what did i say one naira for prayer just thank him and walk away if, if this poor woman you still collect money from her for prayer then you must be a very wicked person isn't it in the name of Jesus, he will return with testimony. My brother, come. Are you working? What do you want God to do in your life? Um, I'm a pastor, so when I, I mean, 
God called me into ministry. So in the field, the back to the, I mean, the came so tough, the, the attacks and the uh, foundation, it became so strong, so I took off. I, I couldn't stay. But up, up to now, God is still calling me back to where I serve him. I've been serving him to. Where, serve him. where were you serving? In Kogi State. No. You need mentorship, you need covering, you need impartation. You don't just get up like that and go into ministry. God saved you, they would have killed you like a chicken. There are rules to this thing. Eh? It's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down, you get up and go to Kogi State. Do you know what pursued you back? Eh? It's the mercy of God, it's not witchcraft. They would, you would have died like a chicken. Please listen, I'm not scaring you. But there are systems. Don't get up out of zeal and just say, I am anointed. Be careful. As powerless as Satan is, is your understanding that this depowers him. If you don't have that understanding, you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed. Praise the Lord. My brother, hold my hands. I'm not just seeing you doing ministry. Truly, you need help. Eh? You need help. After service, come and see this man, Pastor Alpha. Eh? After service, come and see him. He will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. A time of prophecy and activations. Some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction. Your ministries, your lives, your businesses. The prophetic word of God is very powerful. When there is grace back in it. Because it does not only reveal, it creates. Are we together? In the next about two or three minutes, I want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open. Be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman. You are the first. I know you are doing protocol work, but you are the first to receive this grace. I see a grace of two of you. Supernatural grace of the Holy Ghost. Taking you to a new dimension. The spirit. Hallelujah. Benga, come. Grace for another dimension of fire. Lift your hands. Grace. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh dimension. You speak and there is power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. No word will be empty. You speak and there is grace and the power of performance. Hallelujah. Someone come and hold. Victor, come. Come and hold them. Somebody. Grace. Supernatural influence and wisdom and victory in a strange dimension a dimension you have never seen in your life in the name of Jesus supernatural grace I open up that level grace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Where shall they? We're rounding up. They are doing their... Please, someone, hold her. I don't want... Hold the child. Speak will have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that... Ladies, you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening the power of sight. The grace to see. Grace to see. The grace to see. Make sure you are holding our well. The grace to see. Penny, you are taking back fresh fire. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fresh fire. I'm not, it's not like I'm just speaking people. This is this is just by the Spirit. Come. The Lord is bringing glory on us. Fresh fire, even upon your hands, in the name of 
Jesus Christ. Listen, you see, hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus. May that fire, may that grace take it. Drink of that wine in the name of Jesus. Fresh unction. Fresh unction. Capacity. Open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a heavy spirit under that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Place it on her. Just place it on her. Leave, leave it there. In the name of Jesus. Judgment upon that devil. Foul spirit. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but I want you to receive. Let me start with the men of God. You are in ministry here. It's time to take something heavy and something genuine. Let me pray. Jamfa, come. Ejimi, come. I'm seeing a, a new, a truly new grace and a new wine. New grace. And a new one is supernatural dimension. Dimension. This grace will speak in unbelievable ways. Lord, bring him into that experience. In the name of Jesus. Truly bring him into that experience. I open up. I open up. I open up. Closed fountains. I open up now. Closed fountains. I open up now. Fire. Fresh grace for influence. Influence, influence, business influence, new grace, new dimensions of wealth, influence, commanding miracles, strange miracles. Collect that child from hope. Collect that child from hope. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire hope. I activate that dimension. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you eyes that see strange dreams revealing direction for people's lives in the name of Jesus where's Aaron Aaron where's Aaron in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord says I should tell you seasons of reward are before you seasons of great and strange reward father let it be by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit lift your hands in the name of Jesus Christ Something is coming strong. Go. The unction for new levels in ministry at the count of three. If you are here in ministry, there is a call of God upon your life. One, two, that fire comes now. Take that fire now. Take that fire. A new level of ministry, a new level of power. A new level of grace never to be buried never to be buried never to be buried never to be buried where is Yerima head of department media please come quickly quickly I'm praying where is he oh that's him there in the name of Jesus the Lord says he's bringing you honor untold honor untold honor by the spirit of the living God untold honor untold honor untold honor now I decree and declare Jordan where's Jordan Jordan bookstore I hear restoration where are you restoration fire that restoration fire in the name of Jesus everything the canker worm the palmer worm has stolen restoration in the name of Jesus now I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God comes upon you and you begin to run like Elijah I prophesy speed receive it now receive it now speed 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 by the unction of the Spirit speed by the unction of the Spirit speed in the name of
of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every helper of your destiny that is supposed to show up and partner with you and endorse you to the next level in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I place an unction on your life receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now where's pastor house first wife just hold her there she's heavy so in the name of Jesus the Lord is saying have I not said I will bring you favor it will manifest God is bringing favor after you give birth to your child pastor your family will step into a strange level of favor it will be at the commencement of this boy's birth or this child the moment the child is born in the name of Jesus Christ there will be strange miracles by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I pray for you the kind of glory and honor you have never seen upon your life I declare receive it now receive it right now all your tithes your giving God has released the blessings but something has hijacked it in the realm of the spirit I command the release of your harvest I command the release of your harvest I command the release of your harvest whatever was not working in your life before you came here I decree by the spirit of the living God go back to it and watch it work in a way that will shock you whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately I say it again whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to make sure that the earth kills you to make sure that you die or any bad news from your family I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Christ as you step into the month of May by the power that is in the name of Jesus I declare in one month alone in one month he said have you ever had this that a city is born in one day he said but as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a son I declare in one month this month of May a dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring you strange results receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for your family members in the name that is above all names if they have never testified from January till now I command testimonies from next month I pray for those who are students you wrote your exams you cannot rest you are afraid whatever went wrong I change it now whatever went wrong I change it now I don't care what went wrong I change it now anyone here trusting God for a job by May miracle service as surely as the God of heaven lives may God shake the heavens and the earth and give you your job and you are here you are working and they've refused to promote you whoever sits on your promotion gets out of his office in the name of Jesus Christ any human being on this earth who has fraternized with the elements of the supernatural to limit your life I pray now I command all the elements of the supernatural to fight them the same way the stars fought for Deborah I command the earth to fight them I command their success to fight them
anyone who has trivialized your grace and neglected what you represent to make sure that doors don't open for you I decree and declare in their presence the Lord will lift you any prayer life here that has died because of carelessness carnality whatever it is sin that has been responsible for destroying your prayer life your passion you were on fire for God but there's laziness carelessness lukewarmness in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson I command a sevenfold restoration for you now prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ whatever has destroyed your word life no passion you carry your Bible you don't even know what to study you make up your mind that you will study there is a grace that helps men I pray in the name of Jesus may that enabling grace come upon your life now may that enabling grace come upon your life now the final prayer I want to pray for you listen there is a name that God is called the lifter of men hear me don't let any man lie to you that he can lift you on his own a man can receive nothing except it is given to him do you know lifting is a sign that God is with you yes read your Bible lifting to leave your current position to another is not a sign of big manism. it truly is a sign that God is with you read your Bible there is nobody that God was with who he did not lift God who can pick a man from a donkey many of us it's not like you are doing bad but where you are you have been there for a long time everybody is rising and they come and see you spiritually financially please don't let anybody indoctrinate you that lifting is not of God if you are not lifted you will be frustrated at a point because the only way to bless others is as you are rising therefore I speak to your life the God who has gloriously lifted this ministry the God who by his spirit has helped us giving us a voice connected us to over 44 nations of the earth supernaturally by his spirit I pray in the name of Jesus wherever on the surface of the earth your lifting is tied to I decree and declare Maraka tosh kalibre getela tol Mare doskopre teke labari atata Be lifted now in the name of Jesus Be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your business Whatever you do be lifted. Hello Scriptures exhort us From the book of Proverbs It says my son Attend to my sins Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.